All right, I wanted to do a video for some requests that we've had on the YouTube page and the Facebook user group, and that is going over the process of mixing monitors. I'll go over the technical process and then, of course, the aesthetic process uh, on how you work with a band uh, if you're a mix engineer. And so the first thing we want to do is probably label and color coordinate our master bus outputs. In our case, we usually run four monitor mixes. Uh, we leave the fifth blank, and of course we have our subwoofer on aux 6. So bus 1, 2, 3, and 4 are labeled monitor 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so just make sure that you have your four monitors hooked up to the aux outputs 1 through 4. And then any signal that we send out bus 1, 2, 3, and 4 is going to go directly to your monitors. Now there are three ways to get signal to your monitors, and I'll quickly go over all three of those. Um, when you're in the left-right mode, anything that you do with this fader here is going to control, as you see, the volume going out the left-right XLRs. And just like that, if you were to click on bus 1, you'll notice that the faders change, and it will now send this particular signal, in my case, voice 1, box 1, will go out to the monitor 1. Now, of course, I'm not recording that, or you can't hear that, but we are sending the signal, as we see right here, out monitor 1. If I turn this send down, you'll see it go down over here on the monitor. So realize that when you click on this right menu that I call the mix to menu, meaning that by clicking on this, it's asking what you want to mix to this bus, the master fader also changes. So this is no longer your left-right fader. It's your monitor one master. So for example, if you had a complicated mix-up for monitor one and it was overall too loud, you can come over here and this is your master monitor volume. So let's say I was just doing four vocalists uh, at a, a gig and I had all four vocals, as you can see here, in monitor one and it was all too low. I can push the whole mix up and vice versa. If it was uh, too loud, I can pull it back down. So this is your master for your monitor mix. And that's going to change each time you come down to a separate bus mix or monitor mix. Monitor two, we've got nothing going to the monitor. We can see there's nothing going to the monitor in this second bus graphic. As I pull monitor two up here, you can see that it is coming out here. So this is the first way to mix a monitor mix. This is typically called sends on fader. Um, the second way that you can mix is uh, if you want to stay in the overview here and keep your left right faders up, you can also come up here and just pull across the bus sends graphical area here and push and pull these bars in to get your mix. It's probably not quite as accurate as the long throw fader on screen, but it works pretty well. And you can certainly get four mixes up pretty quickly here uh, to rough those in. Now there's a third way, uh, and that is if you click on a particular channel, you can go up to its sends tab and you can see the mix right here. So here is my mix for vocal one. I've got a lot going to monitor one a little bit in two and three, and a little bit more over here. And so these four faders are going to be the same thing as we see in bus one, two, three, and four. In this case, I'm on bus four. This fader is the same as the one you see above. It's not the same four faders, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, uh, because it's only on voice one. So voice one, number four, then number three, bus number two, and back to bus number one. So this is probably the least efficient way to mix, but it is a good way to kind of get an overall uh, of where your particular channel is. Uh, and this is more synonymous with the overview in the graphic. These four here represent the four graphical bars that we see in the overview, okay? So if I was to pull that down, uh, you would see that over here in the sins. That's now way down on three. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, sound check. Well, let's say that uh, our group is just four vocalists to make it simple here. 
Typically, when you're doing a sound check, you're not really mixing in a sends on fader scenario. Uh, for example, let's say that you have vocal one, the lead vocalist, testing their microphone out, and you're dialing that in for the front of house, and you're getting the uh, EQ just the way that you want it, and a little bit honky there, and you want to add uh, a nice high shelf there, and you want to pull out the uh, all the lows coming in, engage their high pass filter. Uh, bring that up to, let's say, at least 100 or 120, okay? So I'm working with that vocalist, and uh, then I want to uh, get that person's monitor mix. And so while that vocalist is singing, each person in that group, the other three vocalists and themselves, are going to give me a signal of how much they want. So I am mixing all monitors in relation to vocal one. So I'm going to get... Um, Vocalist one wants a lot of themselves in their monitor, and everybody else just wants a little bit in their monitor because they're eventually going to want to hear more of themselves, of course. So that's the best way and most efficient way uh, to get a sound check done. Now, if we were to use the sends on fader mode, it's not nearly as efficient. So let's watch this. I'm still sound checking this person, and now if I don't use this method, look what I have to do. I'm going to have to go, and I see that vocalist one wants a lot of their vocal. So I'm going to push their vocal up, and then I have to come back over to bus two and put a little bit of their vocal and come back to bus three and put a little bit of that person's vocal and bus four, a little bit of, of that person's vocal, and then come back to my main left right as my resting point or my home screen where I should always be. So just the fact that I have to click, mix, click, mix, click, mix, is much more inefficient than just simply coming up here and giving all four of those mixes what we need. It'd be even more cumbersome to come up to the Sins tab to use these faders and push each of those volumes up. So uh, the graphical interface is probably the easiest way. It isn't the most accurate, uh, but it's a quick way to, to rough that in. And then we would continue with that same process across all four uh, to create the four mixes for the four vocalists and, of course, Apply that same concept to doing a full band, and you'll build your four mixes um, in the best way, depending on which method you like, one of the three. Another question that we got on our Facebook group was, what are all these other buttons uh, doing here? And uh, it's pretty simple. Um, if you're mixing monitors, um, it's asking you, where do you want to get the signal from? Okay, we're still on my voice. If I was to click on pre-EQ, I would be getting the signal to the monitor mix number one without any of the EQ that I've got engaged here. Okay, so it's going to be flat. It's going to look like, you know, this. Um, Pre-EQ and probably pre-low cut filter, so it's going to be flat. So if I've worked to get this vocal to sound good, we would typically want to pass that on to the monitors. Okay, so I would want to be at least... Um, post EQ. Now, um, if I come down here and selected post fader, what's going to happen is every time that I adjust this volume, it's going to go down in the monitor mix, which means everything that I mix is going to change or mess up their monitor mix. So you typically don't want that. So monitors are typically pre fader, post EQ. And this would be the standard setting for all of your monitor sends. Um, I believe the subgroup is not really doing anything now uh, since the uh, subgroup system is not really programmed in to the uh, software yet, but I'm sure uh, we'll see this be developed a little more elaborate and this will become a little more apparent what the uh, subgroup function is going to do for us. Um, the next thing you'll notice is we have to do this on every channel. So for example, if um, I want to have something, you know, post fader, in my case, I want my subwoofer to be post fader. Uh, so that if I turn down the kick in my left right mix, I certainly want it to go down in my subwoofer mix. And you can watch the uh, subs on aux video that I've done to uh, understand more what that means. But uh, realize you have to do that for every single channel and so for my standard default I do have my aux 6 as post fader on every channel so that um, when I send it to sub it is going to be in 
in correlation with a channel fader. Okay? So that's the way that you're going to build your monitor mixes, one, two, three, and four. And again, in my case, I've got that blacked out. We're not using it. And um, same concept for mixing sub on auxes. And it's the same concept for uh, sending your effects. If you want to put an effect on a certain channel, um, you're simply going to select the effect that you want to mix to in the mix to section, turn up the aux send here, or you can do it down here. And you'll see it coming through over here. And I just unmuted that, which is why you hear that verb. Okay, so you can see it. If I wanted to add some long verb to my vocal, you'll see it here. And my third effects bus is the delay. So the way that you mix monitors and effects is the same concept. We had one person ask on our YouTube user group how they could put effects in their monitors, and it's real simple. So let's look how we're going to get effects in monitors. So I have uh, Mix Boss 1. We have our lead vocalist in their monitor, Mix 1. We see the signal going out, so we can presume that it is going to their monitor. And we also have a little bit of reverb, or let's say Effects 1, and we can see Effects 1 right down here. Now, if I want to send this vocal to Bus 1, I use this send. Okay, realize this is not my left, right. This is my mix two. And so right now I am sending this vocal to monitor one. I'm sending this vocal to monitor one and so on. So if I wanted to add a reverb effect to bus one, I simply turn up right here effects one to bus one or monitor one and I now have reverb going to my monitor. And some vocalists will like that. All right, so if you have any questions, let us know on our YouTube page or check out our Facebook user group, Behringer X Air.